Moana Wanu, I'm Ricky Schmidt. And I'm Mary Noonan. Welcome to the first episode of Tribe Talk. In the world of music, two prominent rappers are currently in a dispute. On that note, let's go to J.D. Swinton. Hey Wanu, this is Jamon Swinton reporting for Tribe Talk. Over the summer, there was a controversy between two popular rappers, Drake and Meek Mill. We went around Wando to ask their opinions on this controversy. What do y'all think about the Meek Mill and Drake controversy? I mean, well, from what I see, man, Drake is the better rapper, you know? Oh, Drake's back-to-back, -back, that, was, that was live, that was fire. Uh, yeah, obviously Drake raps better than him, I think, you know, beat him in that era, but uh, when it comes to realness, I think Meek Mill's got that all day. Oh, I completely understand yeah. that. I don't know anything about that. Well, who do you like better? Drake. So your team, Drake? Yes. What about you? Me too. How do you feel about the Drake and Meek Mill controversy? Um, I think that Drake is winning. Definitely. Um, I love Drake and yeah, he's gonna win. Well, I mean, Drake's a true artist. I really care what Meek says. He's just mad because he lost Nicki. Personally, I don't think they I think they're both not that good. But I think Meek Mill is right. He don't he don't write his own music. Meek Mill wasn't fire. He was what lame. What level of fire are we talking about? From 1 to 10, 100. 0 to 100? Real quick, yeah. Drake won. That's all that matters. Drake is bae, so I'm all for Drake. <laughs> Drake's not bae, but he's good. What do you think about the Meek Mill and Drake controversy? How about Nicki Minaj and Miley Cyrus at the VMAs? Oh. I have too much going on in my life to think about their mess. Right. It's ridiculous. That's Drake from Drake and Josh. Drake has me in my feels. And you know, that's like, that's what I'm about, you know. McMill, he, he can't touch that. Drake, all the way. I really don't care. I feel you. I'm kind of one to be charged up at most times. Right. So, um, so I'm more of a Drake fan than McMill. Whoa. Drake was never broke. He never started from the bottom. They need to get over it. During the fall, the Mount Pleasant Farmer's Market offers locally grown fruits and vegetables. Let us take a closer look into the locally grown community. The annual Mount Pleasant Farmer's Market is a unique experience for vendors and locals. We really, really appreciate the Farmer's Market. I think they're tremendously important resources to help people learn about what grows at different times of the year, what seasonality really means. I wish it was longer. As you can see, even at the end of the season, there's still a nice crowd and it's a pretty day. I really want people to know how welcome they are when I thank them. I don't just thank them for stopping and shopping with us, but for coming to the market because for people like us, this is our store. This is where we have a chance to actually let people see who we are and to understand more about why we don't use chemicals, about why we do it all by hand. I like how fresh it all is. Like you can feel that it wasn't like shipped over here from another state. You can tell that it was all grown locally. I like that there's a lot of people selling different things so you can kind of weigh and balance, oh this person's kale is really crunchy or what have you. Many Mount Pleasant residents are leaning towards more locally grown foods. I like that idea. I think it will help each um, town and state locally. It will help the employment for all those people. I honestly just think it's a good beneficial way to help your own community. We should all try and do it a little bit more to support the local farmer, the local cheesemaker, the local, you know, uh, whatever it may be. The more products we buy from our neighbors, it keeps it the, the money closer to our own home instead of sending it off to the big major grocery chains. We don't grow anything ourselves. We rely on field farms uh, for some of our products. We rely on two or three different farms. Overall, consuming local goods is beneficial to many aspects of the community. With local food, the food's better, the prices are better, the economy of it is better. Just everything about it is kind of more efficient. I can't think of a logical reason not to buy local if you've got the option. This has been Isa Rupadel reporting for Tribe Talk. Charleston has always been a popular tourist destination. With increased tourism, a proposal to urbanize Shim Creek has met mixed opinions. Shim Creek is an iconic waterway located in the heart of Mount Pleasant, where tourists and locals go to enjoy everything the Lowcountry has to offer. I love it. That's why I'm back again to show him. Well, it's a great place to go fishing. You see dolphins and other wildlife here. Shim Creek is known for its many waterfront restaurants and the variety of activities it has to offer. I think that Shim Creek is the heart of Mount Pleasant. Uh, when people come to this town, the first thing they want to do is come down to Shim Creek, 
see the shrimp boats and eat some seafood and take in the beautiful vistas that we have down here. I think it's uh, the most important tourist attraction in Mount Pleasant. Maybe in all of Charleston, but it's certainly Mount Pleasant. There has been a wave of controversy over our favorite water hole about the proposed office and parking garage. A few years ago, uh, Mount Pleasant Town Council set up a Sham Creek Overlay District. And there are certain things that are prohibited in that district. Uh, one of those, a uh, so couple of those things are, you cannot have office buildings in the Sham Creek Overlay District, and you cannot have buildings over 35 or 40 feet tall. This office building and this parking deck, it is like 53 feet high. This parking garage encroaches into the Sham Creek Overlay District, and it's two of the things that are prohibited by that district. And so I, I just think that um, there's a lot to be lost if we develop this as proposed. And I think there's some, some alternative solutions that we ought to consider first. I think it would be helpful for the businesses to have that much space to be able to provide for their customers, parking, that's always a problem. I think it's gonna screw things up because the traffic is bad enough around here. Don't put another parking lot for more people to come in. It doesn't sound like a good idea to me just because that, that'll remove the serenity that we would have here. And you know, that is the reason I come down here is to have the serenity and yeah, put all the hustle and bustle in here that definitely changes the dynamic of it. This has been Savannah Hodson reporting for Tribe Talk. This week on The Rewind, we take a look at Wando's first home football game and freshman parent orientation. On Friday, September 4th, home football kicked off against Ashley Ridge. The chop house was in full effect and loud as ever with their Hawaiian theme. The team scored 28 points, but unfortunately came up short. They'll be looking for rebound wins in the next two weeks. On August 31st, Wando invited freshman parents for orientation. This was a chance for them to meet teachers, tour the school, and firsthand see programs around here at Wando. Welcome to the Wando family, freshmen, and I'll see you next time for the Rewind. With more and more natural disasters permanently impacting communities around the world, you can never be too prepared. We cast it over to Jenna Sikowski for an inside look at the News 2 studio. With the growing amount of tropical storms on the East Coast, meteorologists are scrambling to track them. 
I'm here in the News 2 studio where things are normally very quiet, but during a hurricane it can get quite stormy. A hurricane, it, it's, 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 a, it's a storm on steroids. Higher winds, more moisture, more damage. Well, we use satellites, uh, we use radar once the storm gets closer. Radar will kind of look inside the storm to tell us how much rainfall we might expect. We provide the important information that people need to know. People turn to us because we're the ones that are in touch with the local emergency operations facilities and all that. Our job is just to give the facts. So we're looking at data constantly. We're looking at updates from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, we're getting the information out as quickly, as responsibly as possible. We try to provide the public as much information as we have available to make them aware of what's going on so they can prepare. Meteorologists consider it their duty to give the public the information they need to stay safe during a storm. They make their personal decisions about evacuation based on sometimes what we say. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't say evacuate. We say, here's the storm, we show them the storm, we give them the particulars, and then they have to make that decision based on the, the track and the size of the storm. In any television station in a severe weather event, um, all of the schedules for all the operating employees are extended. People generally work 12-hour shifts. Basically, all of our operational modes are extended. Hurricane season officially runs from June 1st through November 30th, uh, typically here in the Charleston area. Um, we don't really have a threat until August and September and into October. Living along the coast of South Carolina, we know that each and every hurricane season, we have to take every storm seriously because you never know which, my, which one might impact you. I would encourage people, if you have any doubt at all, go ahead and leave, leave early. Then you won't have to deal with the traffic jams and we know around here when it rains hard, like yeah. what can happen? It floods. So, mm -hmm. you know, think in terms of a hurricane, then you got more problems. This has been Jenna Sokowski reporting for Tribe Talk. Across the board, Wando is home to many talented students and faculty members. Now let's turn the page over to Tommy Fairbairn for the story. Good morning, Warriors. Here are your announcements. For Thursday, August the 28th. Photography Club will meet on always been known for the morning announcements but her impact on Wando goes much farther than the intercom. I mean, she just has a heart for kids. Uh, I could tell you so many stories of Miss Woody just saying, I've talked to this kid and I, I think we could find this way to help him out or I've, these group of students just need a voice. And she, kind of, she, I kind of find her to be the voice of the little man. Although Miss Woody's position is a school librarian, her responsibilities extend much farther than the media center. So I get to do all the things that people think of as a librarian, check out books, laminate, all that kind of stuff, but I get to teach which is a part that people don't really think about as a librarian. Uh, we teach research classes, we teach technology classes, we teach one-on-one, -on -one, big groups, adults, students. So I still get the teaching part of it, which is what I thought I would miss when I left the classroom. Uh, but it's, I think what I really like is it's just never the same. Her hard work and care has gone beyond verbal appreciation, as she was recognized as Teacher of the Year by Wando and also the school district. The final announcement was made at the River Dogs game last April, and we were all on the field, and they announced the runner-up, which is a teacher from uh, C.E. Williams, the band teacher, and then they called my name. And I was shocked. They made me put my hands up like this. There's a video like this because I just, I never imagined that that would take place. I was so glad to see her win and so glad to see that honor and kind of her be lifted up for the hard work she does here. This hard work has even been noticed by the state as she is in the running of Teacher of South Carolina. I think Ms. Woody is extremely capable of winning uh, a teacher of the state. Uh, the, for all the stuff that she does here at school, in and out, day in and day out for our students, um, I couldn't think of any other teacher in the state to be more qualified than Ms. Woody. Her dedication to Wando is unshakable, as she has no plans to leave anytime soon. We have a very talented faculty at Wando. They welcomed me and my family. I have children that go to Wando. So, I mean, it kind of encompasses our whole life. and. Um, I want to make it a great thing, but I want to make it great for everybody that comes through here. This has been Tommy Fairbairn reporting for Tribe Talk. All right, we'll be a great one, and no matter where you are or what you're doing, let's walk like a warrior. Welcome back, Wando. Kicking off 2015 with the first edition of the Wando Sports Programming Network. I'm Greg Wingo. And I'm Colby Karish. Today we're going to start off with football, and this is a highly talented offense that we have here going on. Absolutely. Out of all the teams I've seen from across the state, I have not seen a force to be reckoned with like the Wando varsity football team. Exactly. Stacked like a pile of pancakes, like you said, 
And um, you want to shout out some big names? I want to hear some big names. Let me All hear right, it. Let's get this humongous human being, wide receiver, <laughs> four-star recruit, Trey Smith. An absolute powerhouse in the wings, playing wide receiver, making some big plays for Wanda. Absolutely. We'll go with Kevin Brown, running back. He's racking up some yards. Racking them up. Haha, <laughs> run, run, run. Um, we, also <laughs> <laughs> we also got Bailey Hart, quarterback, the gunslinger. The connector, Bailey. <laughs> Looking for big things this year. Don't, <laughs> don't disappoint us. Connections. Now bump, sit, spike you over to volleyball. We're alongside reporter and volleyball expert J.D. Swinton in the studio. The Wanda volleyball team is off to a good start this year. They just won first in the Porter Gout Invitational Tournament with powerhouse MVP Megan Kimbrough. Girls a beast with the head. Coach Glover is doing an amazing job coaching this team. Greg, you have any more information on this coach? Coach Alexis Glover, starting off this season, her 32nd year as head coach of the Warriors women's volleyball team. She's got 792 career wins under her belt. Doesn't get much better. Appreciate your time, JD. And diving into the swim team, boys, I mean, looking phenomenal this year. The recent meet, they scored 494 points, taking up the first place medal with the second place team only having 299 points. Definitely going to compete for state this year. They're looking solid. We are live in the studio with three senior captains, Robbie McDowell, Emmanuel Emavon, and Reed Darby. So you three are the captains this year. Um, what, what is your position? I swim the 50 freestyle, the down and back with the flip, and the 100 butterfly. And I do the, the 50 where you go there and back as well, and I flip halfway, just like this guy. We uh, swim. I, I do the 100 breaststroke, so I, I do four laps. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's it? That's yeah. all you do? Uh, that's pretty much it. I turn 500 wins. You guys expect to take it all the way this year? Looking for a state championship? Not to speak too soon, but we're kind of undefeated. We're the moment. best. <laughs> uh, we're probably going to win state. When I'm trying to go to state and score some points. Take it away, Manuel. Oh. Um, 53. 100 flat. Hit it. Hit it. Yeah. 23. Yo. 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 Just keep swimming. What? Just keep swimming. What do we do? Swim. 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 Nemo. Nemo. That's a wrap for the first edition of WSBN. Good luck to all the fall sports. I'm Colby Karish. I'm Greg Wingo. Signing off.
start to feel cold, I'll sail home again. Goodbye, Brielle. Only whispers can tell of the sweet dreams that we knew so well. I'll see you around our dear ocean town. The frozen days we sat ablaze said we. start to feel cold, I'll sail home again. Thanks for joining us on Tribe Talk. I'm Ricky Schmidt. And I'm Mary Noonan. We'll see you next time. Mom, I'm filming something. I'm trying to film something. Secret weapon. We're seeing big things. <laughs> Not from too secret junior. when you're that big, am I right? <laughs> Welcome back, Wanda. This is the first. <laughs> Jesus doesn't want us to do this. <laughs> Stop saying and just good <laughs> luck. If you do it again, I'm putting you under. 